Hello everybody. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cover the main difference between measures and calculated columns inside of Power BI because that is where you would where you can write text formula in both of those locations. But there is a big difference in writing them in either location. And I'm going to show you where it's optimal to do to do either of these. Okay, I'm going to the first thing. I'm going to start off with creating a calculated column because this is probably what you're most familiar with if you've come from an Excel background. You're used to getting a data set or a table of data and then just coming on to the end and putting in some Excel formula and then doing it again and again and again. So you can actually do that inside of Power BI too. Okay, so let's do it. And what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to write. You see that in my sales table. There isn't actually that much information. A lot of the information actually sits within the products table, like in terms of, you know, what's the current price of the product and what's the cost of the product, etc. Okay, and so what I need to do is I need to find a formula function to place inside that calculated column, which enables me to bring this information down to my sales table. Now the model is a big part of this. Because of the model that we've built, we can actually achieve this. Okay, even though I'm going to tell you after we do it that it's not the most optimal way to do it, I'm going to show you anyway how you can actually get these calculations in here. Okay, so I'm going to go new column and this is just how you create a calculator goal and I'm going to go and call this one revenue. Okay, and then I'm going to use a function called O, actually I'm going to go price, sorry, I'm go price prices, okay. And then I'm going to go and use a function called related and what it does. What related does, the returns are related value from another table. So it makes sense, right? And then I'm going to go and find the current price column here. Okay, and I'm going to close off the bracket and press enter. And then now you see that the price is feeding through here based on the product that we that has been bought in this particular transaction. So every row here is a transaction and it's bringing me my prices into this table now and then what I could ultimately do is I could come here and I could go to new column and then I could then find my revenue, right? I could go revenue equals prices. So you see how it can actually reference a column by itself. Prices times quantity. Okay, now I have no doubt because even I did this when I started first started using Power BI that you think that you would think that you need to create lots and lots of calculated columns like this to get all of this additional information into your tables. Now the great thing is within Power BI is that you do not need to do this. Review set up your model correctly. Okay, you can actually use measures where and write and write used X functions within measures and sensitive calculated columns. And I'll come back to in a second. Like calculated columns do have their purpose, but bringing data into what we deem as a fact table is not one of them. That is not an optimized way to use calculated columns inside of Power BI. You never really want to be using calculated columns down here in your effect table up here in your lookup table and makes sense and I'll show you that in a second, but I first want to show you measures, right? Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going scribble our customers, right? I'm going to grab my customers and I'll turn this into a table so we can actually see the customers, see the customer names, right? Okay. So I'm going to write a formula here as a measure to show you that I can go and calculate up that revenue number just within a measure not having to reference like a particular column. So you see here, I've got a column here that is now revenue. I can drag that in here and I'm going to calculate some revenue, okay? I never really, I never want you to do this. I never want you to just grab a column and drag it into a visual or a table to get results. That's just not what you want to do in Power BI. Every time you bring some calculation into a visual, you want to have it as a measure. Okay, so check this out. I'm going to create a measure here. So we can create a measure a few ways, but you can go to home and you can click on new measure here. Okay, the way to think about measure, which is very different to calculated columns, is that they are like a virtual calculations, while a calculated column runs a calculation and basically embeds data into a table. 
A measure only runs a calculation when you actually bring it into a visual or bring it into your report page. So it only does a calculation then. So it's an amazing way to get lots of calculations in your model, but they don't actually take up much room. And then you can just bring them into a report page and they'll calculate only that one time or when they're filtered or sliced or whatever. Okay, so I'm going to call this one total sales. Okay, and I'm going to utilize a function called iterating function. Now I'm going to go into these a little bit more shortly, but this is just a highlight. What measure can do and how it can enable you to calculate very similar things to calculate columns. Okay, so I'm going to go down to a new line and I'm going to do that by going shift enter. Okay, and I'm going to call a function called some x. Okay, so these are these are sort of called iterating functions rather than just an aggregating function, which is like a sum and it has an x on the end. And then I'm going to go and basically do what it says here. What some x does, it returns the sum of an expression evaluated at each row in a table. Okay, so it says to enter a table, I'm going to enter the sales table. And basically what it does is it iterates through every single row in this table and runs some sort of logic, some sort of expression. Okay, and so I'm going to iterate through the sales table and at every single row, I'm going to go quantity times the related current price. So this look familiar? Does this look familiar? So basically I'm going to go and do exactly what we did with those calculated columns to achieve this. I'm going to do it all virtually within a measure here. It's going to go and run logic the same logic, but it doesn't require me to have any data points inside of the table or just physical data in the table. And then I'm going to push enter and you'll see down here measures appear in the front end as a calculator has a calculator next to it. And then I'm going to drag this into my table here and you'll see that I'm getting exactly the same results. Right? Exactly the same results and it's all been done virtually in a much more optimized way, so much more efficient for your model to be doing things with DAX. Okay. And so then I would just, you just don't want to be using these sort of columns and what I would do is I would come through here and delete these. You don't need you just do not want these columns at all because you just don't need them okay, they just they just taking up because every sort of data point and a big table or any data point at all is taking up memory in your model right and even though for smaller models it's not a big deal but you're very quickly you can get to models with millions of rows and you want to be as optimized as possible and so this particular table has 15,000 rows and all of a sudden I'm just getting rid of 15,000. Data points just unrequired. So I'm optimizing my model here. Okay. And so now I have this total sales. And this total sales is also totally dynamic. So if, say, I want to see, okay, well which salespeople, so I can just click, create a quick filter here, which salespeople sold to which customers, I can click that and I get my total sales number changes based on that. It's totally dynamic, right? All of those calculations are being done and behind the scenes, virtually every time we go and change what's called the context, which we will certainly be diving into a lot more details shortly. Okay. And this is just the start. This is just one formula you know you have to. There's a whole range of different DEX format that you can use that have multiple many different purposes. But I can give you some reassurance that you can virtually calculate anything you could dream up if you utilize DAX measure as well, right, and in combination with the right data model. What you will find is that if you don't set up your base well here in the model, so if your model is confusing and you don't truly understand what's going on here, and you and you can't sort of like visualize what's going on with all your filters and etc., then you'll start thinking that you have to write really super complex text formula, but I'm telling you, you do not. If you set up your model well, DAX can be very easy to implement, I would say. You know it's not a huge learning curve that some of you may think you might be ahead of you there. I'm not going to sugarcoat it and say it's similar DAX, as simple as it's not. But certainly you can help yourself immensely if you set up your model well and have that good base build and then DAX should work more seamlessly on top of that you know and you don't have to overly complicate things they can work a lot more intuitively on your mind. Okay, what logic do I need to write? Okay, now that's just the start, right? 
you can do many different, many different things with DEX. You can, and you can create measures quite quickly, right? So you can come over here, create a measure that might be, say, total quantity, okay. And we'll go over a few more of these in the next section as well and total quantity. You know I could just go counts up the quantity column so I could use a sum, right? I don't need to do anything fancy with just one column here because I'm just literally counting up that particular column and I'm counting up here the quantity that we are selling to those particular customers for that for those amount of sales, right? Doesn't break down which products, etc. But it breaks down, you know, the total sales and total quantity. If we did want to break it down by product, this is where the data model comes in. We could then go and grab our product name column and drag it into there. And now we're getting a breakdown of the, if we just sort it, getting a breakdown of the total sales by customer and by product. And that's all been made possible by what we have inside of our data model. Now the last thing I want to show you is where you should, where you should use a calculated column. Okay, the way to think about calculated columns is they can build out your slicing and filtering possibilities. Okay, so if you think about the model, all of the calculations are generally going to be done in your fact table because that's where transactions are. And all of these up here are sort of like filtering tables. They've got to filter those calculations and the logic that going to put down in here. As an example, let's go to our date table and so we've got a range of different ways that we can filter our tables by, right? Well, what have we don't in this table have a particular column that we want to slice by and one like really simple example here we could use as well. I want a short month like I have the full month here, but from a visualization perspective if I wanted to show things by month. Well I want to shorten. I just want the first three letters of this particular month. So what I could do here is I could go new column. And I could go short month like so, and then I could just use a simple function like left and then find the month name column right, and then go three. And push enter OK. And this is what I mean by building out your filtering tables or your lookup tables. OK, and this is where you know you can't do measures. You can't create measures for that, like for this sort of filtering, you know, inside of Power BI. The DAX measures are more sort of like the calculations, and so this is a way to somehow create a column or a dimension as another name for it that you can then use in the front end here. Say for instance, you want to now bring that short month into your table. You can click and drag it in, and then all of a sudden, you have the ability to filter. You'll see this is an actually sorted correctly that can be quite easily fixed, but basically this is now a filter in my model to actually fix the sorting of this, this is a good sort of segue into that before we round off this, this video, is that within this date table you have the columns which enable you to do that sort. So we've got this column called month of year, right? And so what I can do is I can highlight this short month column and I can come into here. And find the sort by column right sort by column and then I can find the column which says month of year. Okay, so now this column is sorted by that one, and you'll find that this is now in the right order. If you found this video helpful, a quick subscribe would mean a lot to us. Thanks for watching.